Look at them leaving in droves, the children of the land, just look at them leaving in droves. Those with nothing acrossing borders, those with strength acrossing borders, those with ambitions acrossing borders, those with hopes acrossing borders, those with loss acrossing borders, those in pain acrossing borders, moving, running, emigrating, going, deserting, walking, quitting, flying, fleeing to all over, to countries near and far, to countries unheard of, to countries whose names cannot be pronounced. They're all leaving in droves. And it was also, let's say, the Dollar's grandmother. Right, she calls her mother of bones. Mother of bones, yes. Right, yes. and I kept wondering why she, why is she mother of bones, <laughs> until her son comes back from South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With it, with AIDS. Right. And right. he's laying there. And the way she describes him, just laying there Being as just bony. a collection of bones. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. I said, okay, that makes sense. That so it's sort of like taken, and I guess the question is, well, I guess it's already been answered, that. In, in Zimbabwe, it's sort of sort of typical that people will name names like that, where yeah. it's like recording history in the names or recording what's happening in the actual names. I also think she was smart enough to name her characters to give like names like Bustard yeah. to 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 those characters because it, it, I think she used the names to sort of like describe who the people were. Yes, because when we when we think of the term. Busted, yeah. you know, like you know, we, we think of you know, your gully, your 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 wild, yeah, you know, your your yeah. <laughs> uncouth, or whatever. Yeah. And then when we go back, when we go into the book, the character himself, he was just so like yeah. he was all over the place. Yeah. He, was, he was like a bully. Yeah. You know? That's what you would describe as a bastard. as a bastard. <laughs> yeah, you would call him oh, you bastard. <laughs> yeah. much. Like he, he was like you know you know. I guess in America we'll call him like a douchebag. Yeah. He kind of came came off that way. Yeah. So I think she did use the names as well to sort of like describe who the characters were. Yeah. You know, you, you think of the name Chipo. Chipo means a gift. Uh. Mm -hmm. Right. So she paints Chipo as somebody who is, you know, she she, she comes off as a nice girl a nice, who's, yeah. who's been taken advantage yes. of, yeah. and you know, she's she's like this nurturing like person. Yeah. Know? You you tend to associate names like Chipo with people like that. Yeah. So, yeah. but on top of the characters, I think it was also important that she used children rather than adults. Yeah. Right. So in, almost in a sense to paint a picture of of where Africa is right now, it's in a very youthful stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in also in a sense to also describe the innocence of the people that we have, like. You know, we are we are so we are ready to embrace the world in what way? We are ready to do what we can to to make our uh, country grow, our yeah. nation grow. Yeah. And, I, and I think she captured that very well. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're dealing with kids, you just want to dive in the story. You're joyful. You, you're ready to come down to that level to understand them. Yeah. So I thought that was a very creative um, position that she created for the, yeah, with the, for the reader. Yeah, yeah. because it, it, it's, yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because I thought that the way she used the child's perspective and the humor she uses mm -hmm. is like telling you like really serious stuff. Yes. Right. And but the delivery, as you mentioned before, is such that it's digestible. Yes. Mm -hmm. You could actually sit there and read it and not feel overwhelmed, like, oh my God, I can't I just I can't, can't read that <laughs> book anymore. Yeah. I can't do this because yeah. it's just this is just like too too sad. It's I, I also think she used uh, children to get away with a lot of things. Like when she was saying ching chong ching ching chong <laughs> ching chong <laughs> chong <laughs> chong I was like, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a really that was a very funny yeah, well, sort of uh, passage. So, if she wanted to say the most outlandish thing yes. that she knows as an adult, if you put this in your book, they'll they'll call you out as racist <laughs> and this stuff herself. Yeah, she said, yeah. Oh yeah, and the kids were calling him Ching Chong Chen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, children, that's what they're gonna say. Right, right. Blame me to the kids. Yeah, I think she used <laughs> children to get away with stuff like that. I think yeah. one of my favorite scenes is when they went to Budapest and they were stealing the guava fruits. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then and then the woman walks out of the house she's and like, then she just comes and she just starts taking pictures. And I yeah, was this like, British lady, right? Yeah. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Um, I, I was just like, I, I could see this happening. I could see this yeah. happening, but I thought it was a, I, I really liked that scene. And they were very much aware of 
the fact that this woman is just she, she whips out her camera she doesn't care that they're dirty or whatever and she starts right. <laughs> yeah and, and she, yeah and she just starts taking pictures of them it's Ooh. like what are we and my favorite part of that was when one of the kids it must have been i think it was like stina or basta just like just turns around and just walks away. It, it was actually, it was actually God knows. Yeah, God knows was a smart one. So I think, I think. Yeah, he, he was like the leader. I, yeah, I think he got that frustration because they, they had been through so many of those experiences by dealing with the NGO people. Like, yes, yeah, that we see later several on. pictures of yeah. them. So in a way, I feel like they knew that she was not from around because she was snapping old pictures. Whereas in Zimbabwe, in a typical Zimbabwean society. If you're caught doing something that you're not supposed to be doing and an adult catches you, they're not going to snap a picture of you. They're literally going to Interesting. Just pull you out. Like you. They, might they might cane you Interesting. if you're close enough or yeah. they're going to yell at you or something like that. Yeah. So I think in a way she was, I think she was very smart, like how she described like how children sort of like interacted with like their adults, you know, like adults within like their their immediate proximity. But these kids are rebellious in a way because in the, the chapter Black Power, right. when they're in Budapest again and the, the rent a cop, you know, the security guard oh, yeah, yeah, starts yeah. using this like these serious, serious English, English language. And they just say, Do you even have a driver's license? <laughs> 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 Where's your car? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> And they just weren't taking him seriously. And the guy says, I'm going to arrest you. Oh, really? <laughs> Where's your handcuffs? <laughs> re re refrain from using pro profane. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> security guards are portrayed as wannabe cops. So they always emphasize a lot of authority. You cannot enter <laughs> the, the proximity of where they are guarding yes. without explaining yourself, yeah. without saying please. Yeah. So we even have names for them. My whole book. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're kind of like a joke in society, <laughs> but they make themselves really felt. Really serious. Really, so really important yeah. to say. So and the guy was making yeah, himself very important. Yeah. To really say how it's like because people smear at them and say, oh, okay. Yeah, you're a joke what in society. Telling me he thinks he owns this <laughs> building. He doesn't even have anything. Yeah. He's so not getting I, paid. He's hungry. I, I thought that was the other so, part of it where she's just like, the kids recognize the the humor of the whole thing where you have this guy black guy who's guarding this really affluent neighborhood right, right, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and not recognizing the sort of the reality it's sort of like like you're one of us yeah you should you shouldn't be working against you us. shouldn't be working you against be us like on our side exactly but exactly <laughs> but and then it was kind of like foreshadowing what then happens after that where that whole mob just comes over just comes, and just it, it like comes along and yeah. like oh yeah but we we're looking we we're, we're looking to chase our people that are not you know of African origin yep. Yep. and I think one of the girls just goes you know you can't whether whether they're white or black you know they're still people you know we 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 can't be treating them the way we're treating them. Yep.